What's up wellness lovers? Welcome back once again to Ask the Chief, the space for you to get verified facts about your health and wellness. Every day I receive tons of questions about skincare and skincare products and how to take care of our skin properly. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I suffer from adult acne. One of the reasons I actually started this blog was because I found that there was so much information out there that was really misleading and unverified. I even ended up burning my face with lemon because I was following a natural mask. After I went to the dermatologist, I found out that a lot of the things that I knew were actually wrong. For that reason, I created Ask Verchi, where you can find verified information straight from reliable sources. A few months back, Kitava MD contacted me and asked me to review their product. Before we start, I want you to know that I'm not getting paid for this review. The good thing about Kitava MD is that they are using only ingredients that are found in nature. No toxins, no weird chemicals, very simple formula that actually help with the skin. The second cool part of this brand is that it was founded by dermatologists. Because I was so happy with the results with my skin with Kitava and Lee, I wanted to invite one of the founders to talk to us about acne prone skin. And he will be also walking us through their products so we can learn more about their ingredients and how do they aid our skin. So if you were looking for a new skincare routine, stay with me, learn the facts about acne, then watch my progress. Hello, Dr. Justin. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good afternoon, Fergie. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to finally meet you too. I'm so excited for this interview. Before we start, can you please give us a little bit of an introduction of who you are so people get to know you? Sure, absolutely. I'm Dr. Justin Gordon. I'm a board certified dermatologist and co-founder of Catava MD Skincare. Uh, seeing patients live in the clinic, specializing in all aspects of general dermatology. And then I work on skincare development in Catava MD. Before we get started, I just need to mention this is for educational purposes. It's not meant to be individual skincare advice. So mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to be changing what they're doing to their skin. They have a medical condition without consulting with their personal health care provider. I get a lot of questions in my blog about acne. What is acne? Um, it's really, really common and both children and adults struggle with it. It's a disease of what is called the pilosebaceous unit, which essentially is a hair follicle and a collection of oil glands. So you have a pore and you have some oil, dead skin, debris, bacteria can get stuck in that pore, which can lead to inflammation under the skin, what happens is you get so-called whiteheads and blackheads and then deeper inflammatory pus bumps, which are called pustules, and sometimes even deeper cysts and nodules. And doctor, what are some causes of adult acne? Just like a lot of things with our body, uh, genetics plays a huge role. In adults, we see more acne in females than in males, and that's because young women can get hormonal acne, which is a really common trigger for adult acne in women. Age can play a role, menstrual cycle can play a role, choice of contraception can play a role. And those different factors sometimes can fluctuate certain hormones in the blood and the ratios of those can make some women more prone to acne. Another thing we're seeing in adults is, you know, lifestyle. So diet's really, really important. People that eat very unhealthy sometimes can lead to more acne. Let's talk about that a little bit. When you say very unhealthy, you mean like chocolate every day or oily foods? Are those like yeah. the things that no, trigger it's, it's, or what ex actually triggers acne? It's a really good question. There is some really good evidence now that dairy can worsen acne, but it's not all types of dairy that the research is showing, it's mostly cow milk. And interestingly, it's not the fat content um, in the dairy uh, that has been shown to worsen acne, it's the ratio of different proteins in the cow milk. So there's no definitive evidence that chocolate by itself can worsen acne. Foods that are high on the glycemic index, which essentially is a measure of how much your blood sugar increases after eating a meal, um, can definitely worsen acne. There's good evidence for that. Yeah, that's definitely something I've been noticing with my own skin. One of the worst things I did to my skin was putting lemon juice. Can you explain why is it bad for your skin? Regarding lemon juice, you know, any, it's very acidic and can be abrasive on the skin and that can irritate it. Plus anything that has acid in it, when you expose sunlight and other things to the skin, in addition to that, it can sometimes lead to discoloration. Another thing that we do a lot, and I wanna be honest with you, sometimes I have a pimple, next day I have like an important meeting or like a presentation at school and I decided to like shortcut the healing process by popping it. Why is it bad to pop pimples? Yeah, if you can imagine when you pop a pimple, all that gunk and debris that comes outwards, there's a risk of that same amount of material going inwards underneath the skin. And if that were to happen, there's a lot of inflammation that can occur, which can lead to discoloration that can last for many, many months after popping a pimple, which is called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, 
or sometimes even permanent scarring if the pimple is large enough. So in an uncontrolled setting, due to that risk, we generally don't recommend popping them. If you have really, really large breakouts, you know, it can be done sometimes in a controlled setting in a professional office where they have special tools and instruments to do it uh, to minimize that risk. But at home, you know, we really would discourage people from popping their own zits due to the inflammation going underneath the skin and risking scarring. What are the top three practices uh, for acne prone skin? In my experience, people tend to do too much. You know, more is not always better, particularly with acne. People with acne have sensitive skin, and if you do too many things, it might inflame the skin. Uh, three things to think about. One is the types of products you're using. So they shouldn't clog pores. So when looking for products, look for the term non-comedogenic. Non-comedogenic means it doesn't clog pores. They tend to be thinner products, um, thicker makeups, thicker ointments, certain types of oils are comedogenic, which means they do clog pores and you'd wanna avoid those. Number two, kind of to piggyback on top of that is no matter what you're putting on your skin during the day, at the end of the day, it's best practice to gently wash that off so that you don't go to bed with all of that debris on your face. It could be something as simple as a gentle cleanser or a gentle makeup remover pad. For those with really oily skin or acne prone skin, uh, might benefit from something a little bit stronger than a gentle cleanser, a gentle exfoliating cleanser, for example, to minimize some of the oil and open up the pores at the end of the day. Three, I would say, as we just mentioned, is diet and lifestyle. In addition to unhealthy eating, potentially worsening acne, stress can worsen acne too. If you're really, really stressed out, it can raise certain hormones in the body, which downstream can make you more prone to getting bad acne breakouts. You mentioned that less is more. My entire bathroom was feeling with products that actually made my skin worsen. When I went to my dermatologist and explained what I was doing, he told me, you just need two simple steps plus the medication. People that struggle with acne, they want a quick fix. And understandably so, it can certainly um, affect one's self-esteem and their quality of life. And people try a lot of different products to get quick results. Unfortunately, the more stuff you use is not always better. So let's go and talk about Kitaba MD. What is Kitava and why are you guys different? Kitava MD is a brand that myself and my co-founder, Dr. Paru Chowdhury, developed a few years ago, really out of a need that we were finding um, from our patients. We had so many patients coming into the office, struggling with acne and wanting something natural, but effective. And our patients were kind of making their own products at home or were going to farmer's markets and getting things that didn't necessarily have testing behind them. And what was on the market at that time were things that were, you know, all natural, but really weren't proven effective against acne. Or on the other end of the spectrum, you know, your traditional acne products, which can be effective, but can be very synthetic and irritating on the skin. So we wanted to find something for our patients that fit into both buckets. And we found a lot of ingredients that are considered natural that also help acne. They just weren't readily available on the market. And if they were on the market, they weren't in the right formulation or at the right concentration. We did our own clinical trial and we're thrilled with the results showing a decrease in acne. It's a three-step acne skincare kit. Can you walk us through the skincare kit? Absolutely. The first step, it's right there, our acne cleansing gel, and it contains naturally derived salicylic acid from willow bark extract, which is a beta hydroxy acid, a really great ingredient. It exfoliates and opens up pores. Our cleansing wash also has antioxidants like vitamin C, green tea extract. There's some tea tree oil in it. And as far as exfoliating washes go, we feel that ours is on the gentle side. So a lot of skin types can tolerate it. One big question that I always get is that how many times should you wash your face? Our wash is designed to be used twice a day, morning and evening. And most people can tolerate it twice a day. Some people with sensitive skin, uh, I would recommend starting just once a day. And the reason for that is over time, your skin can get used to a product. And if you start slow, you have less of a risk of really drying and irritating your skin. As your skin gets used to it, you can gradually increase from once a day up to twice a day. And the way I recommend using it is to take a little bit, put it on your hands, a little bit of warm water, not hot water, but warm water, lather your hands, put it on your face, let it sit for a minute or two and then wash it off. So no scrubbing? The medicine itself is exfoliating. What about your hands? Yeah, the fingertips are best. If you're using your hands, there's really 
very little damage you can do to your skin. It's if you have like an exfoliating brush, a loofah, something like that. That's where we run into a little bit more risk. Okay, right. now we move on to the smoothing facial cream. So step two of our regimen is the smoothing facial cream. In addition to a lot of the ingredients uh, that are also in our wash, this has niacinamide. Niacinamide is one of my favorite ingredients. We used a pure 4% niacinamide, and we chose that because that's the concentration that has been studied the most over time in acne-prone skin and shown to be beneficial. In addition to acne, niacinamide is a really great soothing agent. It can reduce redness, so it's a real powerhouse ingredient. The smoothing cream also is designed to go on twice a day. It would be something that you use after your face is dry, after washing it. And then for some people using a prescription drug, if you have this at home, um, how could you pair your Kitava and Deep Kit and your prescription? Um, given the amount of ingredients that's in your product, there's a slightly higher potential for irritating the skin. But certainly if there are prescription products that you're using, you would wanna consult with whoever prescribed that product for you to see if it's appropriate to substitute whatever you're using for one of our products or vice versa. Now let's go with my favorite, favorite product, Lifesaver. So step three of our system is a spot treatment. It contains tea tree oil. And tea tree is one of my favorite ingredients. The problem with tea tree is what most people can get over the counter is undiluted 100% tea tree oil. It is way too strong. It's going to irritate yeah. the skin and cause a lot of problems. So we chose 5% tea tree oil, which is a really nice balance between having enough tea tree in it to be beneficial for acne prone skin, but not too high a concentration to risk the skin irritation that you get at higher concentrations. Yes, uh, that totally happened to me. Whenever I will get a product with tea tree oil, I will go terrible. Like I will get red or I will get more irritated or the people will never go out. With these two, three days, I put it on. And then like, because it's a cream, not an oil, it's not like shiny or anything like that. It just like really blends in your skin. And then you forget about it. And then you don't have a pimple. <laughs> Good, yeah. What you're describing was one of our major goals for creating this product is to give consumers uh, the option to use it in a cream form at a concentration that most people can tolerate. So where can we find your products? How can we read more information about you guys? You can get our products online on our website, katavamd.com. Uh, we have a lot of information up there about um, how to use our products, what's in our products, and you can purchase it directly through the website. Awesome. Well, Dr. Justin, thank you so much for all of this information. This is really helpful. Everyone at home, I really recommend Kitava and D because I've been using it for over a month right now. I cannot be happier with the results. So thank you again, and I hope you stay safe. <laughs> You too. Thank you for the kind words. We're excited to share our product um, with those out there and you stay safe yourself.